Hey there, Charger fam. This is Mrs. Boyd. Uh, today we're talking about geometric mean. To hear me explain it is going to require you to use a little imagination. So bear with me for just a moment. The geometric mean is the positive square root of the product of the extremes. Ignore those words. Listen to what I say here. If we look at this triangle, writing is good. This one right here, here we go. This try, oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay. Boom, 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 that triangle. And I label one of these legs, I'm gonna call them LL, it's gonna be for long leg of the triangle. And SL, I'm gonna call a short leg. Got A and X. Well, A is the short leg, and X is the long leg in that triangle. All right, I'm going to draw it again down here with A and X, short leg, long leg. All right, now, forget all this that we just said. Remember that I wrote it down below. Now we're going to look at this triangle. Oh gosh. I drew, drew it wrong already. This triangle. And in this case, B is the long leg and X is the short leg. So we're going to find the geometric mean by setting up a ratio in one on one side well you can see here I've got set up two fraction bars on one side I'm gonna use the little triangle this guy right here and it's gonna be a short leg over long leg And then the other triangle will be on the other ratio, and it will also be short leg over long leg. The key here is these two that are opposite each other should be the same. So if I'm writing it in terms of what I've drawn, of the letters on the triangles that we're using, it would be X, oh, nope, just kidding, short leg, a over long leg equals short leg over long leg. All right, you see how these two are the same letter? That's on purpose. Now we're going to cross multiply. And I've got AB equals X times X. Well, I can rewrite xx as x squared and to find what x is that's what i want to know i take the square root of each side it's like the eraser for the square that tells me that x is equal to the square root of a times b all right so if you can remember short leg over short leg equals short leg over or short leg holy crow short leg over long leg equals short leg over long leg, you'll be set. Let's try one out. All right, so for my first proportion here, let's use two and X. So short leg over long leg. And then we'll use the green triangle. Short leg over long leg. So when we cross multiply, that turns into x squared is, let me write this a little bit better, I'm sorry. Don't wanna skip any steps. x times x equals 50 times two. We simplify and get x squared is 100. Take the square root of each side, and that tells us x is 10. And that's the geometric mean. All right. Uh, 
Try this next one on your own. I think you can do it. Remember, short leg over long leg. All right, we'll use this first triangle with X and eight, short over long. And then we'll use X and 10. And that is short over long. So we get X times X equals eight times 10. That's X squared equals 80. Take the square root of each side and X is the square root of 80. Hooray, we totally did it. Let's try it again, go. All right, triangle on the left first, short over long. It's going to equal short over long. That says 6 times x is equal to 6 times 8. 6x is 48. That means x is 8. Geometric mean is 8. Last one. You're on your own. All right. We've got this X and five triangle, so short leg over long leg. And then five and 12 is short leg over long leg. 25 is 12 X. Divide both sides by 12 and I get X is 25 twelfths, which I can't reduce, and that's as good as it gets. So that's a geometric mean. Um, flip your paper over. We're gonna learn a little bit more about it. It's geometric mean, it is helpful to set up proportions using H like height, uh, uh, which is in altitude. Uh, short leg and long leg, you have three similar triangles to work with. So we do, we already know two of those triangles. So let's look at the ones we already know. We know um, WXZ is one triangle that we've been already working with. We know um, WXYZ is another triangle. And lastly, the only one we haven't done yet is the big triangle that takes up all of the other ones. So it'll be W, Y, X. Sorry, I was trying to think of the order. Because order matters for similarity. So, so let's look at um, the red triangle here. W, Z, X. Oh, Lord have mercy. My triangles are awful. So W, Z, X. This is short leg, long leg, hypotenuse. Then we look at X, Z, Y. And that is short leg, long leg, hypotenuse. Don't forget is right across from the right angle. And then finally, our big triangle. That's the right angle. So that's the hypotenuse, short leg, long leg. So we wrote, looks like hypotenuse first. This should be WX, XY. And I didn't write the letters on the last one. W, X, Y. So Y, W, Y. Yep. And then a long leg. So X, Z. YZ and YX, yep. And then the short leg, ZW, ZX, and WX. All right, we totally did it. Um, so we're gonna solve for X now. So we know what we're doing. Solve for x. We've got x, y, and 3, y, 12, and z, and x, z, and 15. 
Um, so if we want to find X, X is on the short leg of the big triangle. And we know this hypotenuse is 15. So if we do hypotenuse over short leg, we'll have 15 over X equals, now we need to look at another triangle and find the hypotenuse in the short leg. Let's, so that we know X, Y, and three. Short leg down is the three and hypotenuse is the X. So hypotenuse over short leg, we multiply X squared is 45 and X is the square root of 45. All right, now we can solve for Y. Um, looks like Y is the short leg in this triangle. And we know the long leg. So we could do short leg over long leg. That's Y over 12 equals. We can find another one that we know the short leg and the long leg. Um, here, yeah, let's, let's use the blue triangle. The short leg is three and the long leg's Y. We get 36 is Y squared. So Y is six. Finally, we need to solve for Z. Z is the hypotenuse. So it's the hypotenuse of the green triangle. And it is the uh, long leg of the purple triangle. So we can say hypotenuse over long leg. And we get Z over 12 equals purple triangle, uh, hypotenuse is 15 over Z again. So we get Z squared is 180. That means Z is the square root of 180. I know that feels a little confusing. Um, I want to try it one more way before I set you loose on your own. We're actually going to skip this triangle. Um, it's a little harder than I want you to deal with today. Um, we're going to move to the last one. We'll just do this last one together and call it a day. All right. The thing that I want you to do that we didn't do before is draw these triangles all separately and we're gonna turn them to the same orientation. So the red triangle is gonna be this small guy that we always start with, X, Y, and five. Orange guy is gonna be uh, Z, 20, and Y. I should have done this a second ago, I'm so sorry. Hypotenuse, long leg, short leg. They're all gonna be set up that way. Hypotenuse, long leg, short leg, and then yellow triangle will be the big fella. Hypotenuse is 25, short leg is X, long leg is Z. So if we want to solve for X, we have X present as the hypotenuse on the red triangle, and the short leg on the yellow. So I know I need to use both of those to solve for X. So it'll be hypotenuse over short leg. X over five in the red triangle. And the yellow triangle, hypotenuse over short leg. We cross multiply and get X squared is 125. <clears throat> take the square root of each side 
and x is the square root of 125. Now we need y. Um, got y the long leg on the red triangle and the short leg on the orange. So we're going to make it long leg over short leg. <coughs> That's y over 5 equals uh, long leg, we said 20 over y. That's y squared equals 100. That means y is 10. Last but not least, we want to solve for z. We've got z as the long leg in the yellow triangle and the hypotenuse in the orange. So let's say to solve for z, we're going to do hypotenuse over long leg. So we've got eight, or not h, holy moly. Z over 20 equals 25 over z. Cross multiply, we get z squared is 500. Square root, z is the square root of 500. So I hope this method helps you draw those triangles out, label them short side, long side, hypotenuse, and then use those ratios to figure out how to find the missing values. If you have any trouble, please let me know. I'm happy to help, and I'll talk to you soon.